Welcome back. I'm Darren. And if you're new to this series, I'm documenting my 52 years on the planet with an album every week this year, for every year of my life. I've had a few difficult episodes in this series, difficult years, 1994, 2001. But this is the first time that I would dearly love to play my get out of jail free card and skip this one altogether. But like that final sticker, the elusive baseball card, you know, the tricky unlockable or power up, I, I kind of need to do this. So I'm pushing through regardless. Uh, things may get heavy. Um, apologies in advance. I'll spare those of you who are just here for the listening and not the lifetime by doing all the music first. Uh, starting out then, uh, 22 years in the making, kind of. Uh, it's my bloody Valentine's MBV. And it's good. Uh, it's not great, but it's good. Uh, given the very different world it emerged into, you know, shoegaze more popular than ever. And who had that on their mid-90s bingo cards? Uh, a small triumph, I guess. The blueprint is exactly the same. It's not overworked to hell in the same way that Loveless was. I, I think it's okay. Uh, next up, uh, Mole City by Quasi, Quasi. Uh, a madcap grab bag LP in a white album style. Cranky, noisy, indie rock, psych pop, keyboard wig outs, melancholic uh, mood pieces. Uh, never boring, I'll give you, but unified it ain't. Nonetheless, I like it a lot. Uh, whimsical, lo-fi, retro psychedelia. Um, always inventive, sometimes grating. Lots of fun in the right setting. Uh, also this year, Bowie's The Next Day. Uh, his return after a 10-year sabbatical. And with Visconti helping channel some Berlin, New York kind of period vibes, you could consider this a kind of scary monsters revisited. Uh, it's a continuation of his 90s good streak, uh, good Bowie being better than a lot of artists, great. So uh, yeah, a good album, which has been slightly eclipsed maybe by the kind of haunting final stare down of 2016's Black Star. Uh, but my selection for this year comes from a favourite band in the middle of their, I don't know, second, third, fourth reinvention. Yeah, these are the post-punks who kept delivering. It's Wire <laughs> and Change becomes us. Uh, 2013, the band's 13th studio album, 13 tracks. Uh, it's all aligning in this episode. Uh, this album also being the studio debut for second guitarist Matt Sims, a contributor to all their subsequent releases and an official member of Wire right up to the present day. And I say official because Wire looked to be on a bit of a sabbatical right now. Uh, nothing new from them since 2020. Everyone currently engaged in solo or side projects. I've already talked about this album in part two of my Wire Primer um, from about 18 months ago now, where I selected four tracks from Change Becomes Us and dubbed this as you know, Wire's best 21st century release. And that hasn't changed. I stand by that. It's a quite stunning reworking of material originally debuted on 1981's Document and Eyewitness, uh, a live album covering the short period post-154 before the band took a kind of a break, uh, releasing nothing again then until 1986's Snake Drill EP. So in a year where I'm more than ever uh, looking back, in a series where that's kind of the point anyway, uh, you could be forgiven for expecting Change Becomes Us uh, to be a tired collection of decades-old offcuts that should only be of interest to the most rabid of Wire fans. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. The dank, grumbly, awkward source material is pretty much atomized with often tiny fragments of the original songs taken and recast expanded completely transformed take a ruler draw a line through the band's history and you'll find this album sitting on that vector which goes through chairs missing 154 a bell is a cup right on through 2008's object 47 meaning clean chorused modernist post-punk all melodic hooks, mid-song, vault fast, and occasional stabs of brute force, punkish menace. There's none of the overworked textures of Manscape or, or the rabid kind of gabba experimentalism of the read and burn period. Tracing all the links between these songs and their progenitors on Eyewitness is a fascinating diversion, but one that I won't be boring you with here. If you're an early wire purist, first three albums or die, uh, then make this your first stop if you want to kind of dip your toes into wire this side of the millennium. It's a wonderful record, warmer than the stark constructions of 154, but with that unmistakable rigour, that process of this completely intact 
and functioning at the very highest level. Uh, I'll leave it there. Yeah, revisit that primer video uh, for a few more specifics, track choices, analysis, all that good stuff. Because now I'm going to be moving on to the lifetime part of the video. So to begin, uh, I lost a few family members in 2013, both of them on my mother's side, an auntie and an uncle. Uh, my auntie had been ill for about as long as I can remember. Uh, cancer, uh, diabetes. She, she bore a lot with considerable grace and very good humour. In fact, when I think of it, it's her smile and her laughter that are right at the front of the queue. Uh, none of the difficult stuff. She was just a lovely person. But talking about my uncle is much harder. I'll start off by reminding you that back in 1978, I was five, six years old, and I lost my granddad to cancer whilst he was still in his mid-50s. But his youngest son, my uncle, was only six years older than me, and losing your dad aged 11, 12, that's an entirely different thing altogether. As the years passed, I got two younger sisters. I was the big brother. And my uncle, only a bit older than me, uh, kind of assumed that big brother role that I never had. Not in a we did everything together kind of way. Uh, he was just that age where impressionable little me kind of idolised him a bit. He'd ridden out those rough times after my gramps passing, uh, the grief, uh, the loss and the anger. And he just turned into one funny fucker. Rude, quick-witted, dirty mouth. <laughs> Always pulling pranks, doing crazy shit. The life and soul. He lit up every family gathering. And there's music in this bit too. Uh, he was that bit older than me, so... You know, when I was younger, he loved Thin Lizzy, Queen, The Pistols, ACDC, Quo, heavy rock, punk rock, prog rock. And as the 80s wore on, he loved the pop music of the day too. He was a voracious buyer of seven inch singles. All the new romantic and synth stuff, Duran, Spando, ABC, Depeche Mode. Exactly what you'd expect a kid entering his teenage years at the start of the 80s to be into. Every week, something new. I'd don his massive headphones and listen to them all on his big old, you know, glass-fronted hi-fi system, Amstrad maybe. All my earliest kind of pure musical memories, not just stuff on TV and radio. You know, the records he'd let me pick up and hold and play. He was my earliest musical education. He even bought Rip It Up by Orange Juice when it came out. To this day, one of my favourite songs of all time. He was just a constant, a big hearted piss taker, <laughs> a fun guy. And during a time when I was bullied mercilessly at school, he was a relief. He was just a joy to be around. Fast forwarding, I remember him heckling my groom's speech on my own wedding day, uh, me shooting back at him with a quip and the room erupting as one, him laughing louder than anyone. He could take just as easily as he gave. As you can tell, I love the guy. But, but 2013, and I still find this impossibly difficult to say out loud, 2013 is the year he took his own life. He left no note. There were people around at the time. There, there was an inquest. It was a mess. There are songs that I forever associate with him. Stupid 80s pop numbers. Fergal Sharkey's A Good Heart is a particularly potent one. That will reduce me to tears even now. It never gets easier thinking about what happened. So I guess this is as good a place as any to remember him and thank him for all the laughs and for all the music. Apologies then for the heaviness, but 2013 is a year that I, I kind of... I can't get around it and I felt like I needed to face it. Next year, 2014, I can guarantee you I've got some good records lined up to talk about and uh, it should be far easier going. I won't dwell any further. Uh, like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Uh, it, it really helps. Um, but until next time, yeah, do take care of yourselves and uh, I hope to see you very soon. Bye for now.